you know the concept of an asymptotic curve on a graph picture a graph with horizontal and vertical and then and then as we as we move toward toward the vertical line with the vertical axis uh, with a line it gets closer and closer and closer and closer to touching that vertical axis but it never quite does that's an asymptote and that seems to me an apt uh, metaphor for um, improving a piece of a piece of writing until it's almost at 100 percent but many drafts even if they're um, quite effective come in at 80 85 percent and they may have taken um, 10 or 15 drafts to arrive at, at that at that level of uh, accomplishment but the the next 20 or 15 percent moving toward the you could say predestined incarnation of this piece what it ought to be at its best that can take as much work as the first 80 85 percent and it seems to me that um, as we as we climb up toward toward that um, mirage of perfection as we get closer and closer to it every one percent of improvement um, of, of that piece of writing doubles its value as an aesthetic object now that's the part that I can't really justify but it, it feels intuitively true to me lots of times there are um, lines in a, a draft that are the writer's way of writing notes to herself kind of pointing herself in the right direction um, things that read like captions underneath the picture that wouldn't be necessary if the picture can be fully crystallized, filled in. Um, these, uh, these are ways that the, the writer uh, writes herself into position to know what it is that is at the heart of the project. Um, and then they can be taken out later. You know, um, Martha felt extreme guilt at having done this to her mother. Well, that's the that's sort of line that is the, the writer providing a reading of the emotional state of the character. Whereas once we get, once we evolve the draft further, um, this emotional state will be manifested in all sorts of ways that will be more artful than simply flatly stating, stating it. Frequently a story or an essay will um, successfully set up an opening territory psychological, physical, emotional, intellectual, thematic, etc. And then will be an extremely lively piece throughout, uh, linguistically, and even experientially. But when you step back and kind of take your pulse as a reader um, uh, ab about your overall stance toward the piece, you'll come to realize that it has rested content um, recovering the same ground that it opened with rather than setting the elements of that territory into some sort of urgent or decisive motion. You need to find some lever, some, some, um, some leverage to put into the territory to tweak or dislodge um, some aspect of it um, such that the whole thing will burst into a kind of animation um, and uh, therefore achieve a whole extra dimension that, um, that it couldn't have otherwise. Archimedes said, give me a place to stand and I shall move the world. He was the one who invented the, the lever. So a piece can be um, perfectly vivid and alive, sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, but somehow retain an overall flatness. And if you say that to, to its, its author, it can sound insulting because it, it could seem to impugn the quality of the person's thinking or capacity to um, breathe life into language. But it's, it's really much more of a macro uh, assessment. James Clerk Maxwell, a uh, famous physicist, was quoted as saying when he was a, a child, when he would look at a machine, but what's the particular go of it? And it seems that lots of, lots of otherwise successful pieces of fiction and nonfiction um, are lacking that particular go. In teaching, um, what we try to do when we're at our, at our best is to help the, the writer um, see what's already included in germ 
in her or his draft to tease out what is implicit in there already that may not have been um, evident to the to the writer herself because the mind you know is has only so many um, levels that it can pay attention to it at one time and there's many things to concern oneself with when putting together a draft of um, of fiction or creative nonfiction and um, an old teacher of mine, Pamela Painter, um, used to say that, that there are in each draft um, certain treasures that the writer has given to herself or himself that have not been fully recognized, not been cashed out yet. Um, I like to think of them as an uncashed check. There's usually one or two or more uncashed checks in, in any draft, even, even advanced drafts, that can be brought to the attention of the writer and then she can figure out the best way to capitalize upon these elements and make them um, make them serve a greater purpose than they than they already do that's another way that you can teach writing by the way it's the removal of impediments um, that hold the reader at a at too great a remove from the energy and life of the text and also a um, a collaborative um, recognition that there are dynamics underway in the draft that have not yet been harnessed and um, made to work as well as they ought to for the cause.